Hey guys, my name is Zach Dewhurst. I am the owner of Deco Experts. I have been using Deco Network software for 10 years now, and as a Deco Pro, I help licensees, essentially shops like yours, get the most out of the software. One of my previous clients, or actually ongoing clients, um, and one of my favorites is Tim Pip, the owner of Bees Tees. Tim has used Deco Network software for over seven years. He offers everything from screen printing to an embroidery, and he is an expert at essentially the industry. I know a lot about printing and embroidery. Tim knows more. So I'm not going to BS my way through talking about is contract printing and embroidery right for your business. I have brought on Tim Pip to help give you input from his years of experience when it comes to offering contract printing and embroidery services to his clientele. So Tim, introduce yourself and we'll get started. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, Tim Pip. I uh, my company's Bees T Screen Printing. Uh, we're located in uh, New Hampshire. I've got uh, two storefront locations, and then we've got a separate production facility um, a town away from one of my stores. We opened up our second uh, storefront in uh, February of 2020. So about three weeks before uh, all the states started shutting down, we had opened up our second store, but. Um, things are looking back up, and uh, you know we've we've just kind of juked around uh, over the last ten years, um, you know, and just expanded our product offerings and and what we do as a business. Thanks, Tim. So again, today's webinar is going to focus around how can we what tools are available in Deco Network software to be able to um, make the contract pricing um, and, and everything else work the way we need to, whether it be screen printing, embroidery, or any other decoration processes. So I'm gonna real briefly go over some um, quick things. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, Deco recently released something called contract price levels. Price levels here, in the, we're in the admin products, it's where I define different levels. And some contract, uh, clients, there are some licensees or users of the software have many different levels. I mean, maybe you have level three um, and it's a, just a different type of client. So you define your contract price levels here. And what it allows us to do is to then set how the pricing works for blank products and or decoration processes. So if I come up to the supplier product markup, I have my different price levels up here. So in Tim's case, he says, when I do contract work, you actually don't mark up the product whatsoever. You make it 0%, which I find to be very interesting. That's a different way to think about it, that, you know what, I'm not, you really are saying, I'm not in the business of reselling products. I'm in the business of decorating. And you're not trying, you're being as honest and forward with your client as possible because when they know that, okay, he's just charging me for his service of decorating, it, it, it does make you feel better that, that they're just not marking up something simple. Um, so the supplier product markup is how I can change the blank product price. And then if I come over to the decoration processes, so for each decoration process, we've always had the ability to create multiple price tables. But now we can come into the decoration pricing view the different levels, just like I was in the blank products a second ago. And then when I'm on a certain contract level, I can then assign what pricing I want to use for a process for that level. I can even change for like embroidery, what the digitizing fee is. It can be a totally different price for my contract clients as it is for my everyday consumer. So the contract price level setting allows us to really um, offer different price levels to different clientele. And how we assign that level to a clientele is within Business Hub within the customer section. So I'm gonna come down here into customers, product detail or customer details, not product details. Pick someone random, Tim's only up 1600. And within the account details, I can say what level they're on. And anytime I create a quote or an order or they're logged into the software, 
they're going to be using that price level and I can override it from order to order if I would like. Now before I screw up Carla, let's undo that. She's back to the default, no special pricing. And just so you realize, you can take it um, even a step further. So not only does the contract price level work for um, cu customers, you actually can assign it to a specific store, which brings me to the next point. Um, you can make it easier to obtain those contract orders without having your customer email you everything and you put together the order of the quote in Business Hub. Um, Tim, remind me your example site we were talking about earlier. Contact. It's funny the words we search. I know. Okay, so contact. So this is what we would call a contract ordering portal. And the biggest thing comment, that, this is a really poor example design wise, but it's fine. I didn't, I, I didn't make it, Tim did, so. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, the big thing that makes it a contract ordering portal is one, it, it, it requires a user to log in to access the site. You don't want anybody stumbling upon a site where they can place a contract order. You, you've got to be able to do it. So um, I'm going to just turn that off for the moment. And what we are offering on this store is both products that we supply, but will have no markup whatsoever, because I have them this store on that contract price rate level. And we have the customer supplied products. So right here are our everyday products. Right here, are the customer supplied products. So you're probably asking yourself, well, how did I get those customer supplied products in there? Um, back here in the products, what we have done is we cloned a generic t-shirt. So we cloned like the Gildan 5000, and then we turned it into a customer supplied t-shirt and then we require a couple of customer fields to then be able to get all the information we need so if we go back to that site let's go view it and i click on the customer supplied t-shirt so we have one product for each general category that's what you need when you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the artwork give them a price based on all the variables and use custom fields to make sure we're acquiring all the information. This is the customer supply t-shirt, but the customer can add their artwork and then tell me what it is they're actually sending. Okay, it's the Sport Tech um, ST350. I am sending you um, 20 maroon, 20 gold. And in my quantity, I better have in here what the actual quantity is, because at the end of the day, the price is going to be dictated based on how many is being ordered and the amount of colors and all the other variables. So it allows the customer to submit the order to you. You review it, you finalize it, and you can kind of get rid of all. There is no back and forth again with your contract type of client, but to avoid taking their email and have to return it into a quote, you can create a contract ordering portal very easily using Deco Network software. All right, we have covered a lot during this webinar. Hopefully it has been helpful. Again, if you have questions outside of what we're about to answer, do not hesitate reaching out to me or Tim. Tim can not um, only can he potentially answer some of your contract ordering portal questions, but within Deco, within the general settings, and I'm kind of working on building a uh, list of clients of my own that I've worked with. I, you don't have to have worked with me in the past at all, but it, in our industry, we want to act as a one-stop shop as much as possible because uh, typically, I'm not saying you want everyone's order, that is not the case, but every time you say, I can't do that, they're going to go to a competitor who potentially, if they can, they can also potentially do what you were doing before for that customer. So the more you can act as a one-stop shop, the less you have to say no, the more orders it, it's gonna lead to. So within the production and order settings of the general admin, we have the ability to outsource production. 
And here we can link with other Deco Network fulfillment centers and outsource orders to and from one another. So it's a, it's a great way to not have to turn someone away. It, you literally, you have the order in Business Hub, you click outsource production, and it goes to that uh, other Deco Network fulfillment center. Someone like Tim can drop ship fulfill it for you and, and get it there. So um, based on where you're located and, and what processes you need is really gonna dictate the type of fulfillment center you're looking to partner with. Um, but Tim is on the East Coast. He offers both screen printing and embroidery. Um, I know of other shops um, throughout the entire country. So if you're ever looking for someone, you can always reach out to me. Um, but also if you would like, you can reach out to Tim. And our contact information is... So Zach, real quick on the on on this. This is this is honestly one of the coolest things. Uh, and you were the one that brought it to me that Deco does as far as contract goes. Um, one of the cool things is as a as a uh, contract, you know, if you're gonna outsource your work, the biggest pain in the butt is getting all that information over to the printer. It's oh, here's the sizes, the colors, all this other stuff. With this integration, all you gotta do is drop down menu, pick the name of the printer, and boom, I as the printer get an email that says that you have a new contract or you have a new contract job or something like that. And then when I go into my production tab, the job lives there, it's there. So, um, and that, that one that you saw, the way we have it set up is we're doing their shipping as well. So when, when we produce their order, it actually automatically goes back into their deco network as produced, but we set up their deco to pop into our ship station. So as soon as we mark as produced, it goes into our ship station. And uh, you know, it's really it's hands off as far as contract goes. They don't need to call me or email me or send me art. I think I think we can get artwork from um deco. I'm pretty sure that that's the thing. But um, you know, it's you all I think my biggest my biggest challenge really is getting the stuff in, and it's already through Deco. Your customer approved it. Um, you can now it's all a package, so it comes in and we get it done. And I think it even ends up in your in your production schedule. So um, you know I, I don't know how a lot of that works, but it, it's just a big headache of sourcing out your stuff is putting it all together, ordering the stuff talking to the printer, telling them the colors. In this way, we built it. Our colors are built into their, their website, so we don't ever have to worry about a color issue. And they get the order on their site, and it comes right to us. Tim, you need to find a, a DTG or and the East Coast is using Deco. Yeah, right. I, should, I should look at that. <laughs> All right. Um, again, if you have questions about how to use Deco Network software, you can email me at decoexperts at deconetwork.com. If you have any questions about outsourcing contract work to Tim Pip at BSTs, email him at tpip at bsts.com. Thank you for attending the webinar and can't wait to host another one and hopefully educate you guys more on the industry. Thanks, Tim, for joining and we'll talk to you next time.